Hey, welcome back to my channel. Just want to go through how I charge my 650 milliamp 4S batteries. Uh, this is the Joshua Bartwell um, 4S parallel charging board, and it has 10 ports on it. So you can charge 10 batteries at once. Now, of course, there's some math and some things in that. And honestly, this video is just to kind of show you how I do... Um, my charging of all my 4s packs okay i don't really want to get into the whole debate of you can charge this and that together and you can overcharge you can you know all these things i, I just want to kind of go through how do i charge 10 650 milliamp 4s batteries at once um now there's some things involved in that and to start with you need a parallel charging board you need a charger and you need a power supply. Your power supply has to be able to output enough amperage to your charger. Your charger has to be able to accept that amount of voltage and amount of uh, amperage, you know, the watts and everything, to get it to your parallel charging board. So I'm going to go through these things with you so that you can charge your uh, batteries. Now, parallel charging is inherently dangerous. There's a lot of rules you need to follow. If you don't follow them, you're going to have a fire. There's just no way around it. If you overcharge or if you put a dead cell battery into it and you don't take your time to go through your batteries before you put them in parallel charging, you're going to probably run into some issues. I've been kind of reluctant to do a video on this just because I don't want to advocate parallel charging if you don't know what you're doing don't do it okay but if you understand parallel charging and you're patient enough to go through your battery packs one at a time to make sure that they're ready to go into parallel charging and you're doing something you know safe okay you have a fiberglass fireproof bag. I charge my batteries on a steel table next to my back door. I don't leave the room when I'm charging. I'll sit down and I'll do a project with the kids or something. I'm in the room when they're, when this thing's charging. Okay? I never leave the room. And when I charge, everything goes into this LiPo guard bag. How I do that is I'll hook up all the batteries to this parallel charger. I'll slide it into this bag and then I'll close the bag okay so all of the batteries are contained inside there with the parallel board so if there's an issue all I have to do is grab this unplug it grab the handle and fling it out in the yard okay it's just the inherent beast of parallel charging so let's go through some of these uh, components here and first off, we have uh, Joshua Bartwell's um, 4S charger. Okay, slide this out of the way. So now what I've done here is it originally comes with XT60. So that's an XT60. So like your, your bigger batteries that have an XT60 on it. Okay, so I've made a bunch of these. Okay. So XT60 male with a XT30 female. Basically, you can buy a bag of these. You can get a bag of these on Amazon for fairly cheap. I've already gone through a couple bags of them, so it's kind of nice to have you know a handful of them sitting around. So then I just put a piece of heat shrink between them after you solder them together. Now they don't solder together naturally. You have to turn the you have to turn the leads so that one face is out, one face is in, so they'll go together, but you have to file the edge of it. Because if you push these together hard when you solder them together, the pins inside your XT30 will will go in or out. Because you'll end up melting this housing just a little bit. Um so there's a little something to that. If you want, I can, I guess, make a video on that. But anyway, so I made up 10 of those. 
Now, originally, I had made up a handful of, of these so they were angled. Because some of these batteries, like the Race Day Quad. Is it the Race Day Quad? No, it's the GNB. The GNB, when you put in the bounce lead, the GNB are really tight trying to get in there. So I've, I've made up a handful of these handful of these where they're just you know curved off to the side so that when you plug this in you know it's 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 got a nice natural loop to it it's not being strained out uh, so you can also do that and what's nice about this uh, charging board is it does show you um, you know even with it unplugged it does have the battery checker for your bounce plug so all your bounce plugs in there it says says your voltages I know I don't think with this camera you can see that from this distance but it's going through each one it's saying four four point okay sixteen point six four point one six four point one six four point one four okay so it'll go through each one of them So connecting this to the ISDT Q6, this is like 50 bucks. So this is, I think this was 30, I think this was 30 bucks. And then this is 60. So then you plug in the XT60, plug in, making sure that your ground is that way. Plug your balance lead in. What's nice, I, I thought, the design of this was smart because it's actually got six pins so it, it you don't have to worry about putting it in three or four different pins I don't know if you can see here on your charger there's gonna be seven pins so you're gonna have a ground and then your six hot leads Joshua's uh, charging board here it has all those pins so when you put it in you don't have to worry about bending a pin you just put all of them together so it's quite nice so now that, that entire harness covers all those pins correctly, so you don't have to worry about pushing one pin out or folding one back. So that, that was kind of a cool idea. So I plug in my charger. So that's pretty, pretty standard stuff. Now, on the power supply side, what I've done is this, this is a... This is an old wire that I had. Basically, it's just got the, uh, it's just, you know, like a lamp cord. It's, a, it's an SO cable for something a little more heavy duty than a lamp. But basically, it has your, your ground. So it's the, the case is grounded to here. And then you have your, your alternating current going in here. And then coming out, I'll show you on the front here. This is an LED, like for a warehouse. This is a power supply for like warehouse LED lighting. So you have your line voltage, your neutral, and your safety ground or redundant ground or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so you put those wires in there. And then you have three ports of negative voltage DC and three ports of positive voltage DC. Now the thing I like about this uh, this particular unit is it has a fan, and it's also 24 volts. Okay, so I'm plugging it into the AC outlet, and it's supplying out 24 volts, which is important. I don't know if I want to get into all the all the math of why that's important. We'll see how this goes. The other thing is with this uh, power supply is there's a pod right here. With a Phillips screwdriver, you can turn that pod 24 volts. So you're actually at 20, 23.99 volts. Um, read somewhere, you know, just read somewhere along the line that the, uh, the Q6, Q6 plus 300 watt, 14 amp. Somewhere in along the line, this, this little charger, uh, likes to have that just under. 24 volts. So I have this set at 23.98, I think. 
So that's kind of nice. You have a little pod here. And then there's an LED light that comes on to let you know that, that there's power going to, to the unit here. Okay. So then I have, I don't know, 25 years ago, I was in the stereo competitions. And this is just some, some really good thin strand uh, power line. You can get this at the auto parts store. It's just a, a good thick power line that I have going to an XT60. But make sure that you understand you have to have your polarity correct on your XT60. So on your XT60s, they have a plus and a minus. So on your positive side, you're going to have your positive DC. And on your negative side, you're going to have your negative DC. Okay? And then it has a built-in fan. So as this thing is doing uh, doing its job, heating up, it'll, it'll dissipate some of the heat. Uh, throughout this fan so we're all set up 24 volt DC output and so we, we're at 360 watt output on this okay so this particular unit has a has an input of, of your standard 120 and then also 220 so I got the 120 in and then DC output is 24 volt at 15 amps. So it's pretty pretty simple. You just go 24 times 15, and that's 360. See so 360 watts coming out of here. Well, this charger is 300 watt at 14 amps. So my power supply exceeds my charger. So that's good. My charger's not suffering trying to pull what it can't from the power supply now this LED power supply was like $19.99 on Amazon I think they're still at that much I'll check uh, there should be a link below for for the unit I'm using here so the only thing you need to add is your AC and your your DC and the XT60. The only thing it comes with is just the box by itself. So yeah, just plug this in. So we can see here, there's no battery connected. So we're all zeros, zero voltage. And we go one down, we have 24 volts. So the supply coming in is 24 volts. Like I said on this pod, you can adjust it just one down. And it'll show all the information here. So this is a, it's a pretty nice little charger. So then I'll go through and I'll put in, I'll plug in my balance lead. So let's just say this is a, a GNB 650 uh, 4S battery. So you can kind of see the LED flash in here, but here on the charger it shows 4, 4.18, 4.19, 420, 420. So what that tells me is, is that all four cells are within 0 0.03, which is perfect. You know, that's good. So I don't have a, I don't have a 3.6 and then 4.2, 4.2, 4.19, because then you'd know that cell one is having some problems so that you would not want to parallel charge that that battery so when you plug them in normally you're going to be at like 3.6 3.7 because you're going to fly it to 3.5 you're going to land and then you're going to let it cool down hang out recover and my batteries recover to about 3.67 okay so what I'll do is I'll go through every single one of my packs before I put them on the parallel charger together. So individually. So this one is, you know, these are fully charged because I'm going to fly as soon as the rain stops. So tomorrow. So then I'll grab another battery and I'll plug it in. 3.18, 3 3.2, 3, I'm sorry, 4.19. 4.20, 4.20, 4.19. So that's good. At parallel charging, you don't want to have um, 0 0.10 difference. So you don't you don't want to put uh, batteries together on a parallel charging that has 
one battery. So if this battery was lower than this battery by 0.1 volts, um, because what happens is this battery will surge into this battery. Okay. And that can cause some issues, especially if you've got a bunch of them hooked up because in, in the parallel charging, every one of these ports, I told you I wasn't going to get into this because this, this is where parallel charging, you need to kind of take a little more time. And I just wanted to show you this gear and, and how this is put together, but let's go ahead and do it. If you have, let's just say you have 3.60 in this pack. So when you plug it in, let's just hypothetically say this is 3.60 on all four of these. And then you unplug it. You don't want to plug in another one because it's you don't you don't do that. You just plug one in at a time. Let's say this one comes in at four point, let's just say four point eight five. Okay, that's beyond. So that means that this one, this one is storage charged. And this one is empty. This one you flew all the way out, and this one is sitting on storage. If you put these two together on a on a parallel charging board, the storage charge, which is the higher 3.85, 3.6, this one is going to surge this one. These batteries are only rated for 1C. They can't handle that amount of current going into them. This is going to swell up, start a fire, or something like that. So I don't ever ever parallel charge batteries that aren't exactly the same okay they have to be 4s batteries we'll get into that in a second but let's just talk about the four point uh or 3.85 3.6 that's too much they need to be 0.1 from each other so if this one is 3.6 one and this one's 3.71 i'm doing it that's fine because they're they're at point one zero of, of each other 3.66 3.71 should be fine 3.9 3.6 not happening okay if you have any questions on that charging the voltages being a little off, uh, I can answer it in, in your comments and I can do a little research and, and find out more answers if you have more questions. Here's one thing I want to tell you right quick. This is a 3S battery. This is a 4S battery. You don't ever charge these together. It's a 5S battery. A 3S battery, a 5S battery, a 4S, they don't ever get along. So don't ever charge them together. For me, I'm only showing you my rig with my batteries. I have a whole stack of, of 650 milliamp 4S batteries. I charge all these batteries together. Now, on these batteries, I write the date, okay? Once these get to a certain date and they start having some issues, I take the whole lot of them and I get rid of them. And I get new ones. So these are new as of March. These are March of 2018. So once, I don't know, probably the end of this season, these batteries will probably expire. They won't, they won't hold their charge. They'll sag out too much when I'm flying around. So I, I know these will be probably history. If you don't charge them up and discharge them and storage charge them or whatever, they last for X amount of time. For me, it, it kind of depends. Uh, on how long they'll last. But I do date them. When I buy them, I receive them in, I date them right, right quick. Now, when you plug these in, you need to make sure that all four cells are within, you know, point, point zero three, point zero four of each other. If, if you have one cell that's way lower or one cell that's way higher, there's, there's probably something wrong with it. Or if your battery's real puffy, you know, if you if you squeeze on the battery and it's just a puffy ball, I don't ever charge puffy batteries on parallel. I just don't do it. You can if you want, I guess, but I don't I don't charge parallel charge puffy packs. I do have a couple puffy packs that I they're not real bad, 
but I charge them. I take the parallel board off and I charge them individually. So this is my setup. This is how I do things. I plug all 10 packs into the parallel charging board. I get my fiberglass safety bag. I put the whole the whole works in inside the bag. It goes on a steel steel table next to the back door. And when this beeps saying it's done, then I'm done. So now I want to go into some math on how much amperage do we need. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the power supply and the charger out of the equation. We're just gonna look at this with some paper and a and a calculator. So if you don't want if you don't feel like looking at the math part of it or the how do I know how much amperage to set this up? Let me let me just show you this real quick. So if I plug in my battery, you can see 4.19, 4.19, 4.20, 4.20. So all four of these cells are, are almost perfect, okay? So you push down on the little wheel. It says charge, LiPo, 4.20. I don't ever charge above 4.20. This is a 4S battery. And then 1.2 amps, okay? If that's the that's the amperage that you're gonna pump in to this parallel charging board okay now technically on on this just one battery all by itself it's gonna be 0.6 okay because then 0.6 would be one uh, one C that's the recommended safe charging so you're only gonna put in one C this is a 650 milliamp battery 0.6 amps is 1c now let's say i add another i add another pack to it okay this is the other pack that we check to make sure these are equal if you don't want to you want to make sure you check them individually but I, I already looked at them so i know that these two are on the money so to speak So now I have two I have two packs plugged in, okay? 0.6 is no longer 1C. Now it's half C. And you say, well, how do you figure that? Well, point you go 0.650, so it's a 650 milliamp. So you go 0 0.650 times 2 equals 1.3. Cuz think about it this way, when you parallel charge, when you parallel charge these batteries, you're adding all the milliamp hours together. So two packs is, you know, 650 times two. So this charger only sees a big battery. And as you add more battery packs to this parallel charger, it just becomes a bigger and bigger battery. Well, as you know, a 5,000 milliamp battery can handle a lot more amps than one point or point six. So in this case, it'll be you'll take point six five zero times two. That's one point three. So now we'll go over to our charger and we'll bump this up to one point three. Okay. So now one point three amps will go into this parallel charger, and that's equivalent to one C. The factory uh, manufacturer's recommended safe charging okay if we add let's say we add two more packs I, i'm not going to plug them in because i haven't checked these individually but we're just for demonstration purposes we'll we'll put them right here so now we got four of them so we go to the calculator we go 0.650 because all of them are 650 milliamp go 0 0.650 times four that's 2.6 Remember to put that decimal point in, okay? Some people say take your milliamp hour and, and or divide it by a thousand and and you'll get your milliamp. It's just it's simpler for me. An eighteen hundred milliamp battery is one point eight zero zero, okay? A two thousand milliamp is two point zero zero, okay? I just put my decimal point in automatically. I don't I don't have to think about dividing. 
But if you want, you can go 650 divided by 1,000, and that's 0 0.650, okay? So I just take six point, make sure that decimal point's in there, 0 0.650 times four. That's 2.6. So I'll go over to my charger, and I'll go to 2.6. There it is. So now I'm going to charge, charge, lipo, make sure that says lipo, make sure it's not over 4.2, because you can, you can change this 4.2, 4S, 2.6 amps, okay, because I'm doing four batteries. Like I said, this parallel charger sees, one, this charger sees one big battery when you're doing parallel charging, okay? So that's four battery packs on here, okay? 2.6. Let's go back down to one. We have one battery pack on here. So one battery is 0.6. 650 milliamp, 0.6 amps. That's one C, okay? So we can go through a couple scenarios, and I'm going to go through a little bit of math. So this is a 360 watt power supply maximum. This is a 300 watt, 14 amp charger. 300 watt, 14 amp, if you can see that. So now we need to write these maximum numbers down. This parallel charging board, um, it can handle a lot more than what this setup can give it. Uh, this parallel charging board, I, I have to look at the specifications, but this is beyond what I'm doing. Um, it can handle a lot more. All right. So if you have any questions about the hardware, uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll try to do my best to answer your question with that. I'm going to grab some paper and a calculator, and we're just going to go through some scenarios of, of charging and and what this thing is capable of doing when you have 10 packs on it. All right, so our power supply is 360 watts. And that's 24 volt, 15 amps, okay? Our charger is 300 watt at 14 amps. Now, when I charge, when I charge one battery, so 0.65 times one equals 0.65, the charger only goes in single increments, so 0.6 on the charger, so that's one battery pack. Now let's say we do five packs. Okay, so we're going to grab five packs. We're going to check them individually to make sure all four cells are within that 0.3 or 0 0.03 of each other. We don't want a lot of deviation in between these cells. These All four of these cells need to be pretty much identical to each other. And it's a four cell pack. So let's say we do five of these packs together. Okay. So it's simple, we just take five times 0 0.650 equals 3.25, okay? 3.25 amps. That's what I'm gonna put into my charger, okay? Now let's say we fill up that, uh, fill up that parallel charging board. So we're gonna do 10 packs. So we're gonna 10 times, we're gonna do 10 times 0 0.650 and that equals 6.5 amps okay so 6.5 amps is what we'll put into our charger okay now if we take each pack is 6.8 uh, 16.8 volts okay you're not adding them together they're not in series they're in parallel so no matter what you're only going to have 16.8 volts, okay? So 16.8 times 6.5 amps is 109 watts. I don't know if you 
if I should write this long hand out. Yeah, 16.8 volts times 6.5 amps equals 109.2 watts. Okay? 109.2 nowhere near exceeds that charging system. You can charge 10 battery packs at 1C all day long. So our 18, now remember our, our power supply, okay? Power supply equals 360 watts, 15 amps with 24 volt input, okay? And our charger, our, our Q6, is 300 watt at 14 amps. That's what it can handle dispersing that power supply input, okay? So our battery is an 1800 milliamp hour at 18.5 volts, okay? Because it's a 5S. So now, 1800, which is 1.800 times, let's say five packs. We're gonna do five packs at 1C. I'm only talking about 1C here. So 1.800, if you want to, you can put your zeros in there just to make you feel good. Let me get the calculator over here, we can see it, okay? So 1.800 times five. That's nine amps. Okay, so we're going to take 1800 with the decimal point. I'm putting that decimal point in there because that translates to 1C on the charging. So 1.800, if it makes you feel good, times 5 batteries equals 9 amps. Okay, so now let's check. Let's cross check here. We have 9 amps. We're going to multiply that times the 18.5, but is it 18.5? See, it says 18.5 right here on the pack. But let's check, five times 4.20. That's actually 21 volts, okay? So we need to make sure we understand that, okay? This is actually 21 volts, because you're charging each cell to 2.0 volts, 4.20 volts, okay? So we're actually using the 21. Okay, I hope this is making sense to you. So we have five packs. We have 21 volts. So if we charge nine, nine amps times 21 volts is 100. Let's write that down here. Nine amps times 21 volts equals 189 watts okay so our charging system can handle that now let's do 10 packs okay so we're using this battery so let's do 1.8 you can do 0, 0 if you want if that makes you feel better so we're going to take 1.8 Zero, zero. Okay. We're going to times 10. 10 batteries. We're going to put 10 of them together. Okay. It's 18. So we set the charger to 18 amps. Now let's cross check. Make sure that our, our rig can handle it. Okay. So we're going to take the 18 amps times 21 volts, not, not the 18.5, because we're charging a 4.2. Okay, so we're going to take the 21 volts. Okay, so eight, 18 amps times 21 volts, 378. Oops, 378. 
watts. We just exceeded the rig, okay? The equipment that I have has been exceeded on 10 packs. I wouldn't be I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that anyway on this rig, but just mathematically to understand what you're buying, okay? If you want to charge you know, everybody's got this success craze going on. Everybody's wanting to do the success with good reason. You know, there's, there's a whole lot of reasons to go success. But just keep in mind that you can't just put a bunch of success batteries on your parallel charger and hit, you know, whatever amperage because you're going to exceed it. We've exceeded with, with 378 uh, watts. We've exceeded our, our equipment. Even our power supply has been exceeded. Okay. So you cannot parallel charge at 1C these batteries. You just can't. It's a 5S battery because it's 378 watts. I hope this makes sense to you. Before you go spending your money on, on equipment to, to do what you're going to do, think about what you're going to charge. Me, my rig is set up to charge a whole bunch of 4-cell 650 milliamp batteries. That's what that's what this is for. That's why I bought it. Now my Q my Q6 can charge one of these just fine, and I charge these individually because I don't have very many of them. Uh, 3S, has, I don't have very many of them. But I just wanted to let you know that there is a mathematical breakdown, and this is kind of how to understand it. And before you purchase, you know, a Q a Q6 and a 360 watt power supply at 24 volts okay there's a whole bunch of uh there's a whole bunch of scenarios on this there's a whole bunch of opinions on it let me just tell you this when you're parallel charging it's inherently dangerous if you don't pay attention if you don't you know have patience and check each battery individually to make sure that all four cells are identical to make sure that you're only putting four cell batteries together you're not you cannot put you cannot put these together uh, instafire okay and some some say uh milliamp hour batteries like a 554s and a 654s putting them together in parallel i don't do it so i, I have no comment but I just want to let you know that parallel charging is inherently dangerous if you're not paying attention. I've charged these batteries up in parallel for quite some time, and I do it in a LiPo uh, fire guard bag. Um, there's also a, a, a having a toolbox, have an old tool metal toolbox that's kind of vented. You know, you don't want a seal on it because if one of these do go, it's going to create a lot of gas and blow the lid or, or worse. But it's a, just an old toolbox, plenty of air ventilation uh, with drywall, fireproof drywall. So you can actually create an individual cell from one another inside the toolbox as you charge it. I, I find it expensive because you have to get, you have to get balance leads, you have to get you know, for these to plug in and each one of those individual cells, it, it gets pretty expensive. So I do it in a lipo bag uh, all the time. I hope that this information helps you understand a little bit more. And how do I charge my my batteries? I charge these batteries in parallel. So shoot me a comment or if you have a question, please feel free to ask and I'd be more than happy to answer it uh, best of my knowledge or even do a little research so I can, I can learn something along the way and uh, and that's good for me so have a good day thanks for stopping by